you said that China was winning the AI race, the AI competition. Um, um, I know that you've got a powerful, you know, competitor in Huawei, and Huawei has a lot of um, advantages you don't have. Why don't you describe this competition? Are we really losing? It was a very good headline. It was a great headline, yeah. And it uh, apparently caught a lot of attention. Uh, uh, the, the, as you know with headlines, the disclaimer part, uh, the foundation part, was left out of the headline. But, but the, the way to think about that is, that, let me just handicap it right now. If you look at AI, and go back to the first thing that we said, AI is a five-layer cake. Let's just always simplify. It's not, it's not quite this simplistic, but let's simplify AI into a fiber cake. Energy, chips, infrastructure, models, and applications. Okay? I just, and let's handicap it across the, from, top, from bottom to top. At the lowest level, energy, China has twice the amount of energy we have as a nation. I want to ask about that. Twice as much energy as we have as a nation. And their, our economy is larger than theirs. Makes no sense to me. We also know that one of, the most, one of the most important initiatives, one of the most important policies of this administration, and there was the first thing that President Trump said to me when we met, is, listen, we need to reindustrialize America. We need to onshore manufacturing again. We need to, make, we need to help America make things again. It's going to create jobs. That part of the economy has been outshored, on, you know, offshored, uh, and completely gutted the United States. We need to bring that back, and he needs my help to do so. And so, so that entire sector of the economy is missing. And however, without energy, how do we build chip plants, computer system plants, and these AI data centers, we call them AI factories. We're building simultaneously three different types of factories in the United States. Chip factories, supercomputer factories, and AI factories. They all require energy, every single one of them. Yeah. And so on the one hand, we want to reindustrialize the United States. How do you do that without energy? And so the fact that we vilified energy for so long, President Trump sticking his neck out and making taking it on the chin and helping, this, helping the country realize that energy is necessary for our growth is one of the, the, really the, one of the greatest things he's done right off the bat. And so now, at the energy level, back to that stack, we're, you know, 50%. And they're growing straight up. We're kind of flat right now. And so, number one, uh, energy. Number two, chips. We're generations ahead. We are generations ahead on chips, and I think everybody recognizes that. Number three, infrastructure. If you want to build a data center here in the United States, from breaking ground to standing up an AI supercomputer, is probably about three years. They can build a hospital on a weekend. That's a real challenge. And so at the infrastructure le layer, their velocity of building things, because they are builders, their velocity of building things is extraordinarily high. Now, really quickly on, on chips, we're several generations ahead, but don't be complacent. Remember, semiconductors is a manufacturing process. Anybody who thinks China can't manufacture is missing a big idea. But China discounts energy costs for a chip company by 50%. That's right. They they provide free transportation for employees to come out to the factory. That's right. I mean, you don't, you can't do that. I mean, Our energy cost is more expensive than theirs in the first place. Absolutely. And then they discounted 50%. And so it's probably, we're probably, call it four to eight times the cost. Yeah. So tell me, how do you feel about this, uh, this, Jake, this great competition with China? I mean, the, 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 the government is putting enormous resources underneath their champion. We don't do that in this country. You know, uh, how do you feel about that? Well, before I get there, don't, don't let me not answer that question. I'm dying to answer it. But let me handicap the next two layers. The large, the language, the model layer, the model layer, United States 
frontier models, United, our, our frontier models are unquestionably world class. We are probably, call it six months ahead. However, out of the 1.4 million models, most of them are open source. China is well ahead, way ahead on open source. Now, the reason why open source is so important is because without open source, startups can't thrive, university researchers can't do research, you can't teach AI, scientists can't use AI. Basically, all of the industry around the, your economy have no ability to fundamentally advance themselves mm -hmm. unless you have open source. Without Linux, where would we be? Without Kubernetes, where, you know, without PyTorch, all of these different types of technologies that made AI thrive are all open source. Mm. They are well ahead of us on open source. Mm. Mm. And then the layer above that, applications. If you were to do a poll of, of um, uh, their society and ours, and you ask them, uh, is AI likely to do more good than harm? They're going to say, in their case, 80% would say AI will do more good than harm. In our case, it'd be the other way around. <laughs> and so that tells you something that's very, very important. Yeah. Socially, socially, we need yeah. to be careful not to describe AI in these science fiction movie ways of describing AI and, and causing people so much concern. Um, we want to be concerned, but we also want to be practical. AI is about automation. And that area, I think that we need to be careful not to fall behind in the application and the diffusion of AI, because in the end, whoever applies the technology first and most wins that industrial revolution. As you know, electricity was invented, discovered, invented in the UK, but the United States applied it faster, more broadly, and as a result, look where we are. And so we have to be a little mindful. And so anyways, I just handicapped that stack, okay? Yeah. And I don't think it's, it's important when you're looking at AI not to see it as a holistic thing. It's really not about ChatGPT versus DeepSeek. You have to look at it across all of the stacks and across all of the industries. Does that make sense? It's a little bit more complicated than one simple answer. But do you feel you have a level playing field up against China putting their resources under Huawei? Uh, uh, for, first of all, uh, America's technology industry, just as our financial, financial services industry, our military, our technology industry, we can all agree, are the mightiest in the world. I am part of one of the mightiest technology, mightiest industries anyone in history has ever seen. Oh. We have going toe to toe against anyone. The American technology industry has nothing to fear. We are mighty, we're fast, we're inventive, we'll take anybody on. However, we can't concede the market to them. As you know, at the moment, NVIDIA has been banned from going to China, not to mention China has banned NVIDIA going to China. Yeah. And so so we're, we're this, I think we're the first company in history that has been banned on both sides. <laughs> uh, and so, so uh, whoever, whoever banned us uh, going to China, um, uh, them and China uh, agree that yeah. NVIDIA should not go to. Now, of course, I'm being a little, I'm being a little cute here and I'll, 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 be, I'll be a little bit more nuanced here in a second, but at the moment, we're simply not competing in China. Now, what's going on? We have conceded, essentially, the second largest AI market, the second largest technology market in the world. I know. China will, it's not, somebody has said to me, well, yeah, okay, well, we're not in China, but we're gonna grow somewhere else. You're not gonna replace China. It's just as, the world wanting to sell to America and they want to export to America, if they don't export to America, you're not going to replace the United States. We are singular in the world. We are absolutely singular. And so in the case of China, um, we shouldn't concede the entire market to them. They're formidable, but con conceding that entire market 
uh, we ought to go compete for it. Having said that, we should also acknowledge that Huawei is one of the most formidable technology companies the world has ever seen. They deserve, although they have a lot of support, um, whatever support they have, they deserve all of the respect that everybody ought to give them. We compete with this company. They're formidable. They're agile. They move incredibly fast. We said if the United States was not in China, China's AI industry would be set back. Yeah. Absolutely has not happened. As a result, their semiconductor industry has double, double, double. You know, the semiconductor industry in the West, around the world, is growing at 20, 30 percent per year. Growing 20, 30 percent per year compounded versus doubling every year compounded doesn't take long to catch up. 